Hi, my name is Sarah Cornish of My Four Hands Photography. I am going to be quickly running you through my latest um, Photoshop Actions release. Uh, the name of the Action Collection is Enchanted. It's a set of 20 actions that were designed on many different images. Um, the purpose of these actions is to give a wonderful range of uh, different effects that can actually complement your own style and your own uh, creative voice. A lot of times when I create Photoshop actions, I look for a way to make actions that many different photographers can use so that when they do use the actions, they're not looking exactly like my pictures. I want photographers to have access to actions that kind of help them along and help their style. So with that being said, um, I'm going to open up the actions box. And you'll notice right off, I have what says creative actions. And then down here I have helper actions. Um, a creative action is basically an action when I run through it, it's going to change the entire photo. Um, you're going to have a completely different um, amount of contrast. The tones will change quite a bit. Whereas a helper action is usually a one-click action that is extremely easy and it can be used alone to kind of enhance one small aspect of your image or it can you know, be used to accentuate an edit that was created by running creative action. So with that being said, we have Beloved, which is a black and white. Now this is more of a true black and white and these actions are all extremely customizable so if you were to open this up, this folder right here in the Photoshop CS and CC versions. In here I've included all of the layers that kind of help you make the action work best for your image. If you're starting with a different exposure or even white balance, it'll change the outcome of how the action runs on your photograph. So I've labeled these different layers to kind of give you an idea of what they do. Um, Midtones is usually a lighten layer. And when I click this, you'll notice it lighten your, lightens your image up. If you're starting with a brighter white balance, you obviously won't need that. You can disregard it. Or you can hide it or delete it. Um, the conversion is obviously your black and white layer. And you'll, you'll notice, too, that with that conversion off, you have a really pretty color edit. If I were to hide this folder and then click it back, and you notice what it's doing to your image. Um, we have a vintage layer. It just kind of dulled things down just a tiny bit, so you can, you know, change that or get rid of it if you like. Rich is usually more of a matte effect. Um, it's going to show more so, depending on your light, on some images more than others. And so on and so on. So I always recommend that people kind of click through the layers and see what works for them. And um, the other thing is, if you're, you know, working with a color action, you can even kind of reduce the opacity and it'll kind of subdue the effect. It's it's a little more difficult to do that with black and white actions because obviously it takes the black and white effect off of your image, but you know, you can even create your own black and white conversion quickly by creating a gradient map. If you were to click on your adjustment layers and then go to gradient map, you'll notice a gradient pop pops up right here. If you were to click that, you would choose the first black and white preset and then that would give you kind of a basic um, black and white conversion. And if I were to pull this up over the group just so you can see, let's see if we can get it. No, it's not going to cooperate. Um, we'll just check this real quick. But if I were to create that gradient map layer on my color image, you'll notice I have a black and white effect straight off the bat. So. I digress. Anyway, another thing about my actions some people might notice is it duplicates your main image layer. And I get into this more so in another tutorial. I don't want to take up too much of your time since I do have to get through all the other actions, but um, if you don't like this effect, it's fairly simple if you're using Photoshop to uh, kind of get rid of that. So this action, and when I expand it, all the steps that I use to create this action are tucked inside here. Um, and the duplicate first document is always going to be the first action command in the action. If you just unclick this little check mark right here, now when I run the action it won't duplicate my layer. And then you can always just check it back on if you change your mind. Alright, now we're going to go on to Daydreamer. And this little dialog that pops up is called a stop. 
It just tells you a little bit about the action and um, ways to tweak it or customize the action to make it work better. Um, you know, obviously, depending on your image, as I had mentioned before, you might need some changes. Or if there's one layer in particular, I designed the action um, and it's heavy, or it might kind of throw you off. I try to make suggestions. Now, if you run this action a good 10 times and you're sick of the stop, you can easily get rid of it. All you do is the same thing you did to get rid of the duplicated layer. You would just go down to the bottom where it says stop and then click the little check mark next to that. And then whenever you run the action, it won't pop that command up on you anymore. And Daydreamer is great if I were to expand this. I could make it a little darker. Um, you can even actually go in and, and click the layers. Like if I wanted to change a color fill layer where it says matte, I can go in. And you'll notice as I move this around, the tones are changing in my, my action. That's a wonderful way to kind of customize it quickly. Okay, next we have Edgy. This is a favorite, but it's very heavy, so I recommend tweaking this. But you'll see the difference. It's quite, quite awesome. We have Fervor. This one's more subtle. It has almost a retro kind of cyan feel to it. And, of course, like the other actions, you can go in and adjust things to your liking. You can even add your own layers if you wanted to. We have Gasp. Very rich. If it's too much, you can just reduce the, impa the opacity of the entire action. Or you can open this up and kind of click through the layers and see what you like and what you don't. I already know for a fact clean contrast tends to be a little heavy as far as contrast goes. And anything that says enrich too. So just in checking those two layers, we already have a lighter, more airy edit. Hello Gorgeous Black and White. This one's a little more... Um, strong and it has more of a, a range to it. Indulgent. And this one's a darker edit, so if you want to add your own brightness or exposure adjustment layer, such as levels or curves, you can do that. Mirage. This is a cooler edit. Mystic Falls, which was actually extremely popular with my testers. This was one of the favorites. Very subtle and pretty. Noble was another favorite. We have Royal, which is a darker edit. You might want to add your own adjustment layer if you're a if you tend to underexpose a little bit to kind of brighten that up. Splendid, which has more of a color pop feel, so I recommend going in in any layer that says like more color. I would turn that off or tone it down if you needed to, and that'll kind of rein the action in if you're having any problems with that. Verve, kind of a golden tone to it. Virtue. And the last one is Wink, which I, I personally love this action. Now, um, Wink is a bit cooler, so if you wanted something a little warmer, the cool tone layer affects that. Um, we also have some great helper actions in here. We have Color Vamped. So if I were to run this alone and open this up, there's little masks and what you would do with this is you want to make sure you click on the mask itself take a brush you want a brush that kind of is cohesive with this the size of your image um, I never use a hundred percent opacity I usually use a lower opacity and work my way up and then you want a white brush and you just kind of want to brush over um, of course this is going to vary depending on the colors in your image and the way that you choose to edit so it's going to seem very subtle and that's kind of, I designed it that way for a reason, because I don't like an overpowering edit. And when you already use a creative action, you've already kind of changed things. Um, and as you go through, too, you might not seem like you notice right away exactly what's going on. These are designed to just kind of play up some color that might already be there, add something special. Obviously, the stronger the brush the more color you're going to paint on. And if I were to uncheck this and check it, you'll be able to see exactly what's happening. 
we have more of a rich color to our background now. And the reason I choose to paint that on instead of paint it off is sometimes it's just kind of nice to have that control. And you can even double click these color layers and experiment with the colors after you paint it on to see if there's a color you prefer. Okay, next we have Fierce Color, and this is a selective color pop action, meaning this action you would actually paint more vibrancy and more color onto your image. So as I paint this on, you'll notice my colors are starting to get a lot more vibrant and rich. Less tends to be more with this depending on your photo, so definitely use an opacity you know that's manageable so you don't have to kind of backtrack quickly. Seeing green is just a fun action designed to help with the foliage and the green elements of your image. We're going to click on the mask and turn this layer on because they're off by default. And as I paint over my greenery, notice that it, it gets to be more of a pretty emerald green. Or we have lush, which is more of a natural green tone. And obviously, the stronger your brush, the more obvious the effect. And you can even duplicate this layer, and it'll make it stronger as well. So that's something fun that you could do. Faded is more of a soft, subdued green. if you like less color and leafy is more of a vibrant green it almost has like a glowing quality to it very pretty pizzazz actually adds a lot of depth and will darken up your image so if you have a very bright exposure this is something fun to do but just by clicking on this you'll notice that we get quite a bit of contrast and sometimes you don't need to do much if anything that action works well on its own and then whipped is the very last one. This is kind of a cool action. So when I run, when I run whipped, you're going to get a bunch of adjustment layers. We have soften, which is kind of like a um, whimsical feel. And then you almost always are going to want to reduce the opacity of this down just a bit, just to your liking. And then when you add the contrast to it, it kind of gives it sort of a softer touch. And then we have drama soft tone, another soft tone, and then these defogs just kind of help sharpen things up and you're going to want to be discerning with these because they are sharpening layers. Um, you can use any of these these layers by itself with a creative action or you can layer them just as I did to kind of give you a neat effect. All in all, um, this action collection works extremely well with any of the other ones in the shop. You can use the creative or helper actions with any other action collections that I have or sell. Uh, I recommend that you definitely tweak them and get them to where you want them to be. Um, they won't look exactly like they do in preview images depending on your particular starting out image so that's something to think of but you can almost always get a really beautiful effect that suits your image and your needs just by tweaking things very quickly. Um, it's not a very entailed edit. It's not something you're going to have to change a whole lot. I try my best to kind of make them as versatile as possible. So whether you're shooting indoor images or outdoor images, you should be able to make these work and accommodate them. So I hope this was helpful and, and you enjoy these actions. If you purchase them, you can find them at myforehensphotography.com slash shop. It's M-Y-F-O-U-R, Hens Photography. Um, and, of course, I would always love if you would share your images on my fan page and, and show me how you use the edits because it's really exciting for me to see how they transcend to different photographers. Um, so, thank you. Hope this was helpful. I'll have more soon.